An interface defines a set of properties and methods that a class will implement. You can think of them in that sense as being sort of like abstract classes. Like an abstract class, an interface contains no implementation code. And if you implement an interface in a class, then you have to implement all of the members that are defined in the interface. And when you do that, Visual Studio adds the declarations for you, and then you just write the code to make the properties and methods do what they need to do. Once you've implemented an interface and added members to the class, you can override them or overload them. So you might be wondering, well, what's the difference between an abstract class and an interface? Because so far, they sound pretty similar. Well, the big difference is that a class can implement multiple interfaces, but it can only derive from one class. So if you create an abstract class and inherit from it, that's the only class you can inherit from, and you get everything that's in the class. Whereas an interface will typically contain a smaller number of properties and methods than an entire class. And because you can implement multiple interfaces in a class, an interface winds up being a good way to group smaller sets of members that are related and perform related tasks. And then in your classes, you can implement only the interfaces you need. So they wind up being a good place to store a manageable number of properties and methods that provide some type of functionality that you want to be able to implement in classes. The .NET framework has a number of interfaces, and you can use them in your code. One of the ones that you'll use quite often, and we'll be using in the demo coming up, is iComparable. iComparable provides a general way to compare either value types, such as integers, decimals, etc., or your own classes. When you implement iComparable, you add a compareTo method to your class. And you can use the compareTo method to compare two values. So first value dot compare to, and then you pass as an argument to compare to the second value, and then compare to will tell you whether or not the two are equal. Some classes in the framework already implement iComparable. For example, string. So string has compare to built in. If you implement iComparable in your classes, then your classes can include a compare to as well. Let's go see a demo of creating and implementing your own interfaces and adding iComparable to a class so that you can do comparisons. I have the sample application open. Let's take a look at this file iCustomer.vb. That defines an interface for customers. To declare a customer, we use the interface keyword. So if this was a class, we would have said public class customer. Because it's an interface, we say public interface i customer. Now adding the i in front of your interfaces is a convention. The interfaces in the .NET framework start with i. It's not a bad idea to do that in your own code, because this now makes this recognizable as an interface. To define an interface, we list the properties and methods that will be in the interface. So for example, the customer interface has the following properties. Customer name, city, region, postal code, country, location, customer ID as well. And those are standard properties that we've been using in the customer class all along. The iCustomer interface includes some methods. Get location, get customer name, save customer, record sales, and update location. So we can put into this interface all of the methods we've been using in the customer class so far, or only some of them. And in this case, this is a subset of what we've been using all along. So all you need to do is list the properties and the methods, the name, the arguments they take, and the return values, and now you have an interface. An interface is basically a contract. It says a class that implements this interface will include all of these members and will then include the code to implement them. So notice, in the interface, there's no code in these methods, just the signatures. So let's create a class and implement this interface. I'm going to add a class called test. And to implement the interface, I use the implements keyword and then list the interface, iCustomer. When I do that, Visual Basic will automatically add 
the members that I'm implementing. So for example, it adds for me the city, country, customer ID, and other properties, and identifies them as implementing the similar property in the interface. Here are the properties. Here are methods, get customer name, get location, location, etc., including the argument lists and the return values. So now my class has the members that it's implementing. I just need to write the code to make these do something. Let's look at a second interface, iCorporate Sales. And iCorporate Sales is a more specific type of interface. It's limited to properties and methods that are specific to corporate customers. So this interface defines a credit limit property and then two methods, change credit limit and record orders. I can now come back into the test class and I can implement that interface as well. I just add it to the list of interfaces I'm implementing, comma, I corporate sales. And Visual Basic will now add the credit limit property and the change credit limit and record orders methods that that interface defines. Then I'd add the code into these properties and methods to make them do what I want them to do. So that's how you can define your own interfaces and use them in your classes. Let's see an example of using the iComparable interface from the .NET framework. I'm going to open up the sample applications main program and let's take a look at comparing sales. I've defined a class named sale and that's actually defined at the bottom of this code. A sale represents something we're selling and it has a property called amount which will represent the dollar amount of the sale. So here I want to be able to create two instances of the sale class, sale 1 and sale 2. Then I'll set the amount of the first sale to 5,000 and the amount of the second sale to 750. And then I want to compare the sales. So let's run this. This is the example GI comparable interface. We'll create two instances of the sale class and assign amounts to them. Now I want to know which sale is higher, sale 1 at 5,000 or sale 2 at 750. Well obviously I can write code like this. If sale 1 amount is greater than sale 2 amount, then sale 1 is higher. Well that's easy. I can also use compare to on the amount. Amount is an integer and the integer structure in the .NET framework implements iComparable and therefore has a compare to method built into it. So I can say if sale1.amount.compare2 and pass to it the value I want to compare which is sale2amount. If that's greater than zero then I know that sale one amount is greater than sale two amount. And in that case, sale one is higher. But what if I just want to compare the sales? After all, there's only one property in the sale class and that's the amount. So if the amount in sale one is greater than the amount in sale two, then isn't it also true that sale one is greater than sale two? So what I'd like to be able to do is write code that looks like this. If sale one dot compare to sale two is greater than zero, then I know that sale one is higher. And I know this is true because there's only one property, and that's the amount. But I can't do this because compare to is not a member of the sale class. And the reason it's not a member of the sale class is because the sale class is not implementing iComparable at the moment. So let's implement it. I'll stop the program and we'll go down to the sale class and we will implement iComparable. And when we do that, Visual Basic adds the compare to method to that class.
I had done this previously and commented it out. So let's get rid of this new method and bring back the one I had previously. So the method that's added is compare to. It takes as a parameter an object, returns an integer, and it's implementing system.icomparable.compare to. And the implementation code that I added to compare to is the following. Because compare to can take an object, it can take anything. So if I'm going to use this to compare sales, the first thing I want to know is did the user pass in a sale? So if type of object is sale, an instance of the sales class, then we're going to do the comparisons. Otherwise, we're going to throw an exception and tell the user you have to pass in a sale. Then I'm going to create a temporary variable as an instance of the sale class and cast this object to that. Now I've already checked to make sure the user is passing an instance of the sale class, but it comes in as an object. So I need to cast that object to a specific instance of the sale class. At this point, I can call compare to on the amount property. So I'll return underscore amount, which is the private field for the amount property on the current instance of the sale class, and I'll compare that to the amount on the instance of the sale class that was passed into the compare to method. So let's come back to here. Notice that this code now compiles because I am implementing compare to. Let's run this and step through it. I'll press G to bring up the iComparable interface example. Again, create two instances of sale, one for 5,000, one for 750. And I can do the math. I can compare two on the amount. And now I'm going to call the compare to method on sale one. That's the method that we just implemented and I'm going to pass in sale two. Let's step into that. And what we're passing in as an object is an instance of the sale class with the amount 750. That's our second sale. If what we passed in is an instance of sale, then we're going to cast that to sale. And now we can write this code temp, which is the sale class we passed in, has an amount of 750. The class we're in has an amount of 5,000. So we're going to compare 5,000 to 750, and because 5,000 is greater than 750, this compare to method will return a positive number, and sale 1 is higher than sale 2. So by implementing the iComparable interface, we're able to add the compare to method to this class, and now we can compare instances of classes in the same way that we'd compare strings or numbers. And because this class has only one property, the amount, there's no question as to what numbers we use to do the comparing. If there were multiple properties in the sale class and it wasn't immediately obvious, there'd be some additional code we'd need to write but that's beyond the scope of what we're doing right here. So what you've seen in this demo is creating your own interfaces. And in the example we used here, we created a couple of interfaces for customers. And those interfaces implemented a manageable number of properties and methods. We then created a class and implemented those interfaces and were able to add those members to the class. We also saw implementing the iComparable interface from the .NET framework. And the nice thing about that interface is that any class we create can implement that interface and then automatically gain the capability to do comparisons.